This lecture will explain how to do the full truth table method for truth tables. So the first thing we need to do is we need to take all of the atomic statements in the argument and all of the premises and all of the con and the conclusion and put them all in a table together. Then under each of the atomic statements we're going to fill in all of the possible truth values for these atomic statements. And we'll do this in a very systematic way. So the general method is starting working from the right, fill it in the first column, just fill in the truth values as follows, true, false, true, false, etc., until you have as many rows as you need in the truth table. In the next row, so the row just to the left of the rightmost column, we're going to double the number of T's and the number of F's. So T, T, F, F, etc. And then we're going to continue doubling the, next, the number of T's and the number of F's until all the columns are filled in. So if there's a third column, it'll be T, 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 F, 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 if there's a fourth column, then you'll have eight T's and then eight F's, however many columns you need for your, for your truth table. So these columns where you put all of the basic truth values are called the base column. And the general formula for the number of rows in a truth table is 2 to the n where n equals the number of atomic statements in the argument. So let's look at an example. I'm going to fill this in for you. So here we have our, we've put our atomic statements in the truth table, and we have our premises, so P1 is P and Q, P2 is P, arrow, Q, arrow, R, and the conclusion is R. So we're going to fill in the first column of the base column here. So we want to do T, F, T, F. And you'll notice we have eight rows, and that's because we have three atomic formulas in this statement, P, Q, and R. T, F, T, F. So we have eight rows in this truth table. This two to the third is eight. Okay, so now we're going to double the number of T's. So T... T, and then F, F, T, T, F, F, oops, F. And then in our final column, we're going to want to do twice as many T's as we did in the last column. So we did two T's in the last column, so now we'll do four. So T. T, 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 and then the rest are F's. And if we had a fourth column, which we don't, um, we would, you know, need twice as many of these, twice as many of the TF, TF, TFs, so we need 16 of those, and we need, you know, another set of the TT, FFs, and so forth. And likewise with this. And then we'd need a fourth column that has eight T's and then eight F's. I'm not going to bother to fill in this truth table right now, um, but what you would do is then look at, well, no, actually, let's do it. Let's see how to do this. So here, P and Q are both true on this row, so the statement P and Q is true as well. Let's do this to make them sort of line up a little better. We'll okay. 
Okay, so again, it's true here. And now P and Q is going to be false ev on every other line because either Q is false or P is false or they're both false. So all the rest of these are false. Okay, and then P arrow Q arrow R is going to be true when they're all true. And here we have Q is true and R is false. So the consequent is false and our antecedent is true. So that's a case where the conditional is false. Now on the next line, Q is false. So Q arrow R will be true and then P is true. So it will be true. And likewise for the next line, and then the last four lines will all be true because the consequent of the conditional as a whole, P, is false. So these are all true. Okay, and then for R, we're just going to copy this column for R. That's the easy way. Okay, now let's talk about how to look at a truth table and see if the argument is valid or invalid. So an argument is valid if and only if any truth value assignment that makes all the premises true also makes the conclusion true. Another way to say this is that an argument is valid if and only if there is no truth value assignment that makes all the premises true while the conclusion is false. So if we look at this argument, excuse me, we can see that we so we what we do is we look at the places where the conclusion is false. So line two is the first instance of that, um, but we see that it is not the case that all the premises are true. So P2 is true, but P1 is false. So that does not um, show invalidity, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, and then the last line also has the conclusion false, but at least one of the premises is also false. So we don't have any instances where all the premises are true and the conclusion is false. Now you could just go also go through this truth table and look at all the instances where all the premises are true and then see if the conclusion is false there. So we could just look at line one and we see that that is true so again it doesn't show invalidity. Um, however I find it easiest to look at the conclusion because it's just one line you have to look at and then you just look at where all the ones are that are false um, and we're not interested in the other lines. But remember, it's not just one of these rows. So I can't like circle the row where the, you know, line two, where the premise is false and the other premise is true and the conclusion is false and say, aha, that shows validity. No. Um, I also can't circle the row where all the premises are true and the conclusion is true. So line one and say, aha, that shows validity. No. That's not how it works. It's the whole table that shows validity. It's the fact that I don't find any instances where all the premises are true and the conclusion is false. However, an argument is invalid if and only if there is some truth value assignment that makes all the premises true but the conclusion false. So we look at line one and we see we have true, true, false. So this argument is invalid, line one shows it. And so we can just highlight that line or specify, you know, the truth values T equals true, P equals true, and that is what is called a counterexample. It shows that this argument is invalid. So just like we did counterexamples in um, the first module, we're going to do counterexamples here. They're a little different because we're using these truth values, but the idea is the same. We're showing a case 
where it's possible for all the premises to be true and the conclusion false. And that's all we need to prove invalidity. Um, so if we hadn't found one on the first line, we'd look at the second line, um, which doesn't happen to be a counterexample. You could have more than one counterexample in an argument, for sure. Um, but all you'll need is one, because finding another counterexample doesn't make it more invalid.